My name is Anne Haas, and I'd like to welcome you to the Structure of Government, Exploring the Fabric and Framework of Public Health Powers, a Colorado Perspective. This training will provide a Colorado perspective on several of the topics explored in the Change Lab video seen earlier in this training. While federal laws apply to all the 50 states, each state has its own unique legal framework and state-level public health laws. As a participant in the governmental public health system, it is important to understand Colorado's public health law framework. On the screen, we see a map of Colorado showing all 64 counties. After this training, you will be able to explain Colorado's constitutional and statutory structure of government, describe the interplay between federal, state, and local authorities, define the powers and duties of public health in Colorado, illustrate how state and local public health can operationalize their powers and duties, and determine when and why public health may perform legislative or judicial functions. We will first review Colorado's branches of government. Similar to the design of the federal constitution, the Colorado Constitution creates three branches of state government. These are Article 4, the executive branch, which includes the governor and cabinet level agencies, and state cabinet level agencies, which are constitutionally limited to 20. Article 5, the legislative branch, which includes the Colorado General Assembly, which is the body that passes laws applicable statewide. And Article 6, the judicial branch, which establishes the state court system and authorizes county courts. Starting with the state judicial branch, we see that it is structured in three hierarchical levels, which include 22 district or trial courts, which is the lowest level state court in this structure. Trial courts hear civil, criminal, domestic relations, probate, juvenile, and mental health cases. The Colorado Court of Appeals, which hears appeals of cases from trial courts, and the Colorado Supreme Court, which decides what appeals it will accept from the Colorado Court of Appeals and may also grant individual petitions from a lower court decision. Judges sitting in each of these state courts are appointed by the governor, not elected, based on recommendations from a judicial district nominating commission at the trial court level and a state nominating commission at the Court of Appeals and Supreme Court level. All appointed judges must stand for retention, which means they must be approved by the voters after serving an initial two-year probationary term. Judges serve six-year terms at the district level, eight years for the Court of Appeals, and 10 years for the Supreme Court. The Colorado General Assembly is a bicameral legislature created by the 1876 state constitution and is made up the, of the following. The House of Representatives, consisting of 65 members, and the Senate, consisting of 35 members. Statutes are codified in the Colorado Revised Statutes, known as the CRS. On the screen, we can see the Colorado State Capitol Building, which is the home of the Colorado General Assembly in Denver. The Colorado Constitution outlines that the state executive branch includes five elected offices, as we see here on the screen. These offices include the Attorney General, Lieutenant Governor, Governor, Treasurer, and Secretary of State. The Governor leads the administration of most executive branch functions through the oversight of 17 appointee-led agencies, including the Department of Public Health and Environment. Colorado's Constitution, the title page of which can be seen here on the screen, identifies three forms of local government in Colorado. Article 14, Section 1, authorizes Dillon's Rule counties, which operate as instrumentalities of the state. Under Dillon's Law, counties are limited to only the powers authorized by state statute, and the executive and legislative functions are vested in the Board of County Commissioners. Most Colorado counties operate under Dillon's Law. Article 14, Section 16, authorizes home rule counties as the second type of local government. Residents of a county can create a home rule county by a vote of the people. A home rule charter allows counties, such as Pitkin and Weld, to set their structure of county government, including what parts of the county government are authorized to perform what functions. 
Home rule counties are required to perform all of the statutory obligations of the counties, such as local public health duties, and they are not empowered to modify or add to the duties authorized in statute. Home rule municipalities are the third type of local government structure, authorized in Article 20, Section 6 of the Colorado Constitution. Both Denver and Broomfield operate as home rule cities and counties. Home rule allows voters to adopt a charter to exercise more control over matters of local significance. The charter identifies what local body has legislative authority, such as a city council, and the executive authority, such as the city council and or the mayor. Municipality responsibilities described in state law continue to apply in home rule municipalities to the extent not superseded by the home rule charter and state law takes precedence over any conflicts with a home rule charter for matters of mixed state and local concern. Finally, counties may also establish county courts, which hear traffic, minor crim criminal matters, civil matters up to $25,000, protection orders, and small claims matters. The Colorado Constitution obligates counties to provide the services required by state statute, which include the following health and human services, which includes public health, child welfare, and senior care, as we see in the photo of a community member delivering groceries to a senior citizen, infrastructure, which includes roads, mass transportation, street lighting, solid waste disposal, public amenities, such as parks and recreation, libraries, cemetery districts, tourism, zoning authority, including county planning commissions and housing authorities, public safety, including law enforcement, courts and jails, fire protection districts, and emergency management services, among others, and local school districts and school boards with general supervision provided by the State Board of Education. Local government funding to provide these services comes from a variety of sources, including property and sales taxes and a portion of state taxes, such as gasoline taxes. Additionally, Colorado has about 2,600 special districts that provide specific services and are spread throughout the state. Special districts can be categorized into approximately 36 different types, including parks and recreation, library, and mental health care service districts, among others. Now that we have a good understanding of the structure of government in Colorado, we will dig into how public health functions at the state and local level. Colorado state and local government public health have shared responsibility, known as concurrent jurisdiction, for many public health issues. State public health laws and rules apply statewide, and any additional county or municipal public health requirements must be at least as stringent as and cannot conflict with the state requirements. State law requires counties to create a county or district public health agency, select their own public health director, and appoint a local board of health. The state also provides some funding to LPHAs, including per capita funding, which is required by state law, and some individual contracts to support specific program work, such as immunizations. Typically, the state funds do not cover all public health program or administrative costs. As an executive branch agency created in Article 1 of Title 25 of the Colorado Revised Statutes, state law assigns CDPHE executive powers and duties in a wide variety of public health and environmental areas, such as public health law, which includes disease control, vital records, prevention services, laboratory testing, and health facility and emergency medical services regulation, and environmental law, which includes air, water, and solid and hazardous waste management, in addition to environmental health oversight, such as retail food licensing. Counties, by state law, are responsible for public health functions within the county and must create county or district public health agencies to perform their executive public health powers and duties. Each county, by resolution of its Board of County Commissioners, must create a county public health agency or participate in a district, meaning multi-county, public health agency. Any two or more contiguous counties 
again, by resolutions of their respective boards of county commissioners, may establish and maintain a district public health agency. Each local public health agency includes a board of health, a public health director, and all agency personnel needed to perform the agency's duties. LPHAs have both operational and policy powers and duties. Operational duties include completing community health assessments, creating local public health plans, providing core public health services like disease control and vital statistics, and administering and enforcing public health and environmental laws and orders. Policy duties include advising the local Board of Health on public health policy issues, determining with the local Board of Health which health programs to implement, and collaborating with CDPHE and its boards and commissions. Local boards of health provide administrative, policy, and financial oversight to their local health departments. Their role and makeup were formalized by the 2008 Public Health Act. Local public health agencies serving populations of 100,000 or more are required to have an independent board of health made up of at least five health experts and community members. We see an example of this type of board in the image on the screen. Local public health agencies serving smaller populations can be governed by either an independent board of health or, at minimum, by a board of health comprised of the three county commissioners within a county. State law gives boards of health specific powers and duties, such as selecting a public health director, providing office space, and approving a local public health plan. Local boards of health may adopt local public health rules that apply throughout the board's jurisdiction, and those rules cannot be inconsistent with the state public health laws and rules. Local boards also set policy for the public health agency, such as approving the local public health plan or determining whether to approve a syringe exchange program. They collect fees, accept other sources of funds, and authorize contracts for the local public health agency. Now that we have considered the state and local public health legal framework in Colorado and their executive functions, we will highlight some legislative and quasi-legislative functions assigned by the Colorado Constitution or the state law to individuals and entities other than the Colorado General Assembly. Some legislative functions in Colorado fall outside of the legislature. Let's learn where these legislative functions are authorized. Colorado citizens, through ballot initiatives and referred measures, can vote to enact constitutional amendments or state statutes. Examples of successful ballot initiatives passed by Colorado voters include tobacco taxes, medical and recreational marijuana, and industrial hemp. Another successful initiative, known as the Tabor Amendment, modified the Colorado Constitution to require voter approval to collect any new taxes. This amendment prohibits legislators from independently enacting new taxes via legislation. However, the General Assembly enacts laws that impose fees for particular services. The governor is authorized by state law, known as the Disaster Emergency Act, to enact executive orders. State and local public health officials can issue various public health orders. Type 1 rulemaking boards promulgate rules that regulate public health and environmental issues statewide. For public health, important rulemaking boards are the Air Quality Control Commission, the Board of Health, Solid and Hazardous Waste Commission, Water Quality Control Commission, and the Water and Wastewater Facility Operators Certification Board. Regardless of our separate branches of government, some functions are shared between the branches. For example, state law authorizes the executive branch to perform some quasi-legislative functions. State law, known as the Colorado Disaster Act, authorizes the governor to issue executive orders to address emergency situations that require immediate action, such as a fire or flood, or as we recently experienced, a global pandemic. We see an image of a mask required sign in front of a retail store as an example of a requirement stemming from an executive order issued during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Disaster Act, in part, authorizes the governor to suspend statutes or rules as needed for a limited 30-day period, subject to renewal, in order to mitigate the emergency situation. 
Additionally, state law authorizes both state and local public health agencies to issue orders as needed in furtherance of their work. Such orders typically set requirements that intend to mitigate the spread of disease among the broader population and may implement vaccine mandates, as we see on the screen, or require isolation or quarantine for this purpose. State law also delegates rulemaking functions to multiple state agencies and boards or commissions. When delegating rulemaking authority, statutes tend to provide a broad description of the work authorized, and the rules then supplement the statute with the details needed to operationalize the work. Rulemaking hearings in Colorado must meet the terms of the State Administrative Procedure Act, which includes advance notice of the rulemaking and an opportunity to participate in the rulemaking proceeding. These requirements are commonly referred to as due process requirements. Both state and local boards of health are empowered to adopt rules to implement their statutory powers and duties. Local public health rules must not be inconsistent with the state public health laws. An example of the quasi-legislative rulemaking authority can be found in the state law that requires CDPHE to investigate and control the causes of epidemic and communicable diseases affecting the public health. This broad power and duty has been implemented through the adoption of a rule by the State Board of Health that currently has 16 pages of content, including what diseases are reportable, who must report, how disease investigations should be conducted, and the requirement that the work and records remain confidential, among other topics. All of these quasi-legislative functions, to include executive orders, public health orders, and rules, have the force and effect of law when properly issued, meaning that they result in the creation of enforceable requirements. State law also requires the executive branch to take on some quasi-judicial functions. For example, when an agency proposes to revoke a license, the State Administrative Procedure Act requires that the licensee be provided due process, including advance notice of the proposed revocation and an opportunity for a hearing to challenge the decision. When the hearing requirements in the Administrative Procedure Act apply, no court challenges can be heard until the decision following the hearing at the agency level is final. This is known as the legal doctrine of exhaustion of administrative remedies. In terms of the mechanics of the administrative appeal process, the Act requires the appointment of a hearing officer or administrative law judge to hear the challenge and issue a decision similar to how a court functions. These administrative legal decisions, once final, may then only be challenged in the state court system. State and local boards of health each have statutory authority to conduct hearings to adjudicate an issue, and either state or rule defines in what circumstances the board has jurisdiction to hear a particular challenge. Let's bring all that we have learned together and consider some examples to highlight the concepts. The first example we will consider is disease control in Colorado. When we look at disease control authorities across government entities, we find that the federal government has broad general authority with respect to protection of the public's health and national security issues, as those issues have impacts across state borders. Disease control issues that do not cross state borders are generally left to state and local public health to manage in consultation with federal agencies like the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The federal government may also provide funding to support state and local public health disease response activities and declare public health emergencies pursuant to a federal law, which will also provide a pathway to some federal reimbursement of costs. For specific response actions within a state, it's the state and local governments through the authority granted by the 10th Amendment to the United States Constitution that leaves to the states those powers that are not reserved to the federal government that do the heavy lifting on disease control and prevention within a state. Colorado statutorily requires both state and local public health agencies to control epidemic and communicable diseases, known as having concurrent jurisdiction, and they exercise this authority by conducting surveillance into diseases and conditions that are required by State Board of Health rules to be reported to public health to determine when and where disease is spreading. Tools in their collective tool belts include 
inspecting premises where disease transmission may be occurring, reviewing medical records, requiring testing to determine if disease is present, issuing or amending rules, and issuing public health orders for isolation and quarantine or other movement restrictions to prevent disease spread. Failure to comply with a public health statute, rule, or order can result in public health entities filing an action in court to compel compliance. A second example of overlapping authorities is the regulation of restaurants in Colorado. At the federal level, several federal agencies, including the United States Department of Agriculture, or USDA, and the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, have responsibilities associated with the regulation and setting of standards for the production of food. Additionally, the FDA has produced a model law known as the Food Code that states may choose to enact or adopt that sets the regulatory framework for food. At the state level, Colorado law requires CDPHE to license and regulate retail food establishments, which include restaurants, and set the rules for the licensing program. The State Board of Health has adopted the 2013 version of FDA's food code in its rules to set this standard. State law further allows CDPHE to delegate the retail food licensing and inspection functions to local jurisdictions. At the local level, if a county is delegated by CDPHE to conduct restaurant inspections, they do so in accordance with the State Board of Health requirements. Delegated local public health agencies collect licensing fees, conduct inspections, site violations, and compel compliance with all rule requirements. During this training, we have learned about Colorado's government structures at the state and local levels, highlighting similarities and differences and making comparisons to the federal branches of government. The Colorado Constitution creates the three separate branches of state government, the executive, legislative, and judicial branches, and further creates counties under Dillon's law unless the county adopts a home rule charter. State and local public health agencies, each part of the executive branch, have statutory powers and duties, some of which overlap, known as concurrent powers, and others which are discrete and not shared. CDPHE's jurisdiction is statewide, whereas local public health agencies are limited to the county or district in which they operate. Any public health requirements set at the local level must not conflict with state law. While executive branch agencies, both state and local public health, perform some legislative functions, such as rulemaking and in issuing enforceable orders, and judicial functions, such as holding administrative hearings. You should now be able to explain Colorado's constitutional and statutory structure of government, Describe the interplay between federal, state, and local authorities. Define the powers and duties of public health in Colorado. Illustrate how state and local public health can operationalize their powers and duties. And determine when and why public health may perform legislative or judicial functions. This concludes Structure of Government, Exploring the Fabric and Framework of Public Health Powers, a Colorado Perspective.